Hello, and welcome to another Blender know-how tutorial. In this video, we're going to be learning how to create one of the easiest textures in Blender. And uh, this is just the marble texture, and it's going to give you a few different principles, and then let you run away with them. So this is really good for uh, beginners or people who are just getting into procedurally generated texturing and shading. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to turn on my screencast keys here so that you can see down here in the bottom of the corner all the buttons I'm pressing. So I'm going to hit X to delete that cube and hit Shift A, Add Mesh, and a UV Sphere. Right click on there, click Shade Smooth. Now I'm just going to go into the top view just so I can see what it is. And I'm going to go over here, click EV, and change it to Cycles. This isn't something you necessarily need to do. Um, there's other ways to do it, but this will give you an accurate representation on uh, YouTube of what you'll be seeing if you were to render it. So uh, your workflow may be just to hit F12, render it every time you change something. My workflow for this is to use the uh, render view right here, the shading for that. And then I'm also going to turn on the denoising here. So uh, it just depends on what kind of graphics card and things you have that can run this smooth enough for you. So to get to shading, uh, you gotta have to open a new tab here by just clicking and dragging above these and you can keep dragging them as much as you want to close them. You just drag above the edge. Hopefully that makes sense. And then I'm going to come over here to Shader Editor, click New, and then this is, uh, if this is your first time here, this is a different interface than what most of Blender has. If you've worked with like Houdini, you might feel a little more at home. Or in uh, Maya. Maya also has something very similar to this in some of their shading and um, other tools. These right here, these all control the appearance of this shader. This is this is the shader. You can increase the subsurface and you can see that it, the lighting actually goes beneath the surface and you can see a little bit of um, softness added. Or metallic, you can make it look metallic. These are all things that you can change and honestly with marble you can change these and they would probably affect it. I'm not actually going to work with these. We're going to work more on the procedural side of things. So. I'm going to come over here and hit Shift A, add, search for noise texture. This is one of your favorite uh, textures as procedurally generating things. You're going to love this. This is probably the number one tool you'll use. And I'm just going to plug into the base color so you can see what it looks like. It looks like absolutely nothing other than just like cloudy, but you can change things right here that give it a lot different appearance. and. The cool thing about this is it applies to, you can apply it to different objects and if you change them, they all should look differently. Now they don't here, and there's for a reason, uh, we need to add search and add a texture coordinate. This will give it uh, the, the missing link here. So this vector is what determines where the texture is placed on the object. So now if we go in here, and if we move it slightly to the left, this is actually completely different than this. And if we do the same here, this is going to be completely different than that. So they're, this is really cool. So you can't really tell because of the grain is so small. But actually, let me if I decrease the scale here, now you can tell that each one of these is different. Like this is completely different than this one. So that's the, the basic principle of why you would want procedure generated things in the first place. To get this where we want this, we are just going to create, we're just going to change this to two and a half, five, one, and zero. And you're probably thinking like that doesn't look like it at all. So now all you have to do is hit shift A, add, search for color ramp. And this is also very useful for procedure generating things because you can increase contrast or decrease values that you don't want. But we're essentially just going to increase the contrast there in a certain range that we want. So a lot of marble that I see looks similar to this, or like the, the noisy marble looks similar to this. Um, if you go outside, uh, some of the marble actually looks similar to that. Like if you go out in the, sometimes they have like marble uh, stone in places. Sometimes it's actually the dark black marble. And you can just do that by just flipping these numbers or flipping these values here. So this is actually very useful. This is like the basic workflow for most of procedurally generated things. Is you'll, you'll create uh, something that you can throw your shader onto. You can make any object, honestly. 
and then maybe even duplicate it and just change the location of them so you can see the differences and make sure that you know it looks good in different locations and then uh, these three are probably your most used nodes along with maybe a mix and I know I'll probably go into this more into another tutorial but essentially you can mix these together with more than like you can duplicate these change numbers and mix them together uh, to get different colors different values different looks to your procedurally generated shaders and textures so I hope this has been fun hopefully this has shown you some new techniques to, into using procedurally generated shaders and textures and we'll see you next time on Blender Know How hit that like subscribe talk to you next time on Blender Know How